Can you hear it with your ears? Can <clears throat> Let's start that over. Can you hear it with your ears? Can you see it with your eyes? Can you feel it wiggling between your quivering thighs? That thing, that thing, that thing with James. Once every millennium, something will come along. When you feel it, you will know it, cause it's coming on strong. That thing, that thing. Sit back, relax, deep breaths, no stress, let me come inside your mind, I promise you it won't take long, the change will happen soon, you will feel something so special growing deep within you, that thing, that thing, that thing. Welcome to episode 33 of That Thing with James J. Asher II. I'm your host, James J. Asher II. That's me. <clears throat> episode, episode 33. Here we go. Today, I am going to continue uh, my story about my start here in Austin and... In keeping with the last episode, I'm going to try to somehow, I'm somehow going to try to weave in the idea of alienation. So if you haven't seen the first part of this, I suggest you go back and listen to the episode just before this. Go back and listen to episode 32. This is episode 33, part two. Of the outsider. <laughs> now, before we get into it, I just I want to let everyone know it's college football season, and I could care less. I don't care much at all right now, but there are depths I could go in my disinterest. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care about sports ball. Um, if you do like sports ball, more power to you. It's not like I'm against it. I just don't find it interesting. Like some people don't find ballet interesting. Some people don't find theater interesting. I just don't find sports ball interesting. There you go. That's my opinion. How are you doing? You doing well? Having a good week? Cool. Great. My turn to continue talking. Uh, before we get into it, let me take care of some quick business. If you want to help support this show, you may do so You've, through donations. You can donate at my Patreon account, patreon.com slash that thing with James. You can donate as little as $1 per month or as much as $15,000 per month if you've got fuck you money or if you're really bad with money management. Either way, if you want to gamble on something, gamble on me. I guarantee the odds are in your favor. Good things will come of it. Um, Patreon.com slash that thing with James. If you want to get in touch with me, if you have an idea for a, a subject to cover on an episode, if you are in need of advice or have any other kind of questions you'd like me to answer here on this show, send me an email at thatthingwithjames at gmail.com. All this information will be written in the description in case you missed it the first time. But if you want to email me, hit me up at thatthingwithjames at gmail.com. You could also probably hit me up on my social media. I'm active mostly on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is at James J. Asher. <clears throat> you know, you can, you can, you can see little insta videos and tweets and stuff like that at james j asher uh let's see i have a website jamesjasher.com i'm pretty sure it's still up 
things have been a little funky with it on the uh, maintenance end uh, as far as updates and things are concerned, but I, I'm pretty sure it still exists. JamesJAsher.com. There you can find my blog. If you go way, way back before I started this show, you can see some examples of some of my writing from like two years ago. <clears throat> Pardon me. I had a lot of mucus today, so I'm trying to keep myself clear here. Uh, let's see. Also on the contact page of my website, you can find my agent's contact information if you want to reach out to him. Uh, if you have like, if you want to, you know, maybe propose a job or project or something to me, send it my way. That, that'd be cool. Or, or send me an email or hit me up on, on social. Uh, if you're listening to this and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show, rate and review. And if you're watching this on YouTube and if you haven't done so already, also please subscribe to my channel. Be sure to select the little bell icon next to where it says subscribe. Then you can get notifications for when I uh, upload new videos. I have also been doing um, clips from this show in case you missed it. And in case you don't have like a full hour plus some change to watch these full episodes, watch the clips. I, I started them a couple weeks ago and they're about, you know, around five minutes long, around that length. And they're just some of my, uh, one of my favorite moments or highlights from each episode. I do one clip per episode. You can find that on my YouTube channel as well. So be sure to subscribe, like the videos you like, um, leave a comment, and share the show with your friends, all of you. Um, the more the merrier. So, let's see. Let's get on with the show. Let's get on with the story. Last... The last time, where did we leave off? I had just uh, opened the door to my room at the edge, and it was a mess. There was hair and nail clippings and dust and, and lipstick and dead bugs and empty pill bottles strewn about um, after I had gone through two weeks of frustration with the management at that apartment complex after they told me that they were going to clean it and that's why it was taking two weeks they didn't even touch it well i i finally get into that room it's my first night i'm very i'm livid with the state of the room and um and then my roommates come home. I, you know, I, I'd seen them once before and I'm already friends with the gal from New Zealand. Um, but the other two people who lived on the other side. So the way it was set up is you walk into the door and you're in a living room situation. And there's also like a dining table off to one side. And then in the back, as soon, like far back, you can see like a half kitchen and just to the side of the half kitchen is a little nook with a washer and dryer in it. And um, and then on the left and right walls of that living room area, there are doors. Those doors lead to other like kind of small hallways and three other doors. Now, so, so you walk into the door on either side and you're in a little, little hallway and you'll be facing one door. Uh, you have to choose a side. If you chose the left side and you walk through that first door into the little hallway, you'll be facing another door. That was the door to my room. And then immediately to the left was the room to the New Zealand, my New Zealand friend and now roommate. And then off to the right, down this hall a little bit, it's not very long. There's a sink and mirrors and two medicine cabinets across from a door to the bathroom. The bathroom has a toilet a, uh, and a bathtub shower unit. <clears throat> now, there was no, on my side of the apartment, there was no shower curtain. Um, the Kiwi, let's call her that the New Zealand gal, the Kiwi had not bought a um, shower curtain yet. 
And, and I was very confused by that because she'd been living in the apartment for about two weeks already. And she hadn't done that or, or, or much else from what I could tell as far as like making the place a home, making it homey. Now, uh, on the other side of the living room at the other hall with the other bedrooms and other bathroom there's two other rooms and that's where the dallas kids lived that's where that's was their bedroom and they were dating one was 21 years old the guy was 21 the gal was 20 the guy was about to be kicked out of rotc because he was on probation for i'm not sure what the story was weird and the gal, she was an aspiring model. And um, I, 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 I think she had a job or was in between jobs. I forget which. But either way, they were both in school um, and both about to drop out. <laughs> like they did not get very far and they were not doing that well in school or, or even ROTC. And the gal, I found out that she was an aspiring model when one morning, soon after I moved in, she said, um, and, and she was very proud of herself and was trying to impress me with the fact that the next day she had a, a lingerie shoot. And I said, a what? I've got a lingerie shoot. A what? A lingerie shoot. What's that? You know, like lacy undergarments and stuff like that and i said a ling that's a lingerie shoot and it took me about like a week to figure out like i i just wrote it off and i was like that's a weird name for a shoot i guess that's what they call a, a shoot where you wear like lacy sexy undergarments and stuff like that and it took me a week or so to figure out she meant lingerie so that's the kind of people I was dealing with here. L lingerie is is lingerie, and um, and ROTC tests you for drugs. They give piss tests. So the guy was taking this stuff called Triple C, which I talked about at the end of the last episode. So it was my first night, and the next day I had a meeting with the guy who. I was hoping would become my talent agent so that I could start getting auditions and, you know, get my acting career up and going in no time. Well, I, so I get to the apartment the, my roommates aren't there. My room's a mess. I pick it up as much as I can, um, and start just like, keeping my stuff in my bags. I don't want to get too comfortable because I want to make sure to clean the room first, but I'm so wiped out and just happy to have a place to stay now of my own um, that I just kind of like crash out. And not long after I set my bags down, it's already late afternoon. My roommates all return. We get to know each other. We all, um, one person makes dinner. I think the Kiwi made dinner and um, I look at the sink and it is just piled high with dishes like these people had everyone had way more kitchenware than they needed and they used all of it but they didn't clean any of it there was just dried not even coagulated just dried cemented queso on pots and pans and everything and fucking there were ants there and there was an odor and i was like oh shit i'm living with messy irresponsible people great i i do dishes i like to keep if at least keep the kitchen and the bathroom clean at least do your dishes at least pick up after yourself if you make a mess please just pick up after yourself it doesn't take that long if you make a mess clean it up if you dirty some something clean it up and set it up to dry if you see stuff that's dry that's set set out you know take a moment to put it up in the cabinets if you find something you, you, you know if something is already organized and you need to use it and it doesn't get dirty or anything 
put things back the way you found them. These are basic things I, I guess I take for granted. These are basic things that I say, you know, any child would know. Something a child would learn and honor, I suppose, if they were raised well. You know, clean up after your fucking self. It doesn't take that long. Less than five minutes, tops. Chances are, if you make a little mess with something like not food related, if you don't have like dirty dishes, if you just have stuff laying out, I guarantee it's going to take less than 60 seconds to pick up after yourself. So fucking do it. But these people did not. And I I knew I was in for some frustrating times with that regard. Well, anyway, they make dinner, we have dinner, and we all sit around and get to know each other. And, uh, and at some point, not long before I have to go to sleep, it's like almost 10 p.m., I have a meeting the next day at 9 a.m. Yeah, let's say it was 9 a.m., um, not far, maybe two or three miles away. Uh, around 10 p.m., I say, okay, it's time for me to start going to bed. Um, and uh, the guy, the ROTC guy, introduces me to triple C's. He's like, hey, I've got these. It's basically like Robitussin in gel capsule form. And if you take enough of them, it'll make you make you trip out. I take them so I can pass the, the piss test to the ROTC so I don't get kicked out. And I said, oh, oh, okay. And he offered me some. He's like, you want some? And I said, I don't. No, I don't think so. It's not a, I don't think I want to like trip out tonight. I should get my sleep because I've got a big, important meeting tomorrow. And he said, oh, come on. Just do three or four. And I said, what will that do? And he said, probably nothing. Might make you feel, I don't know little relaxed or something, but you seem nervous, you know, and just, you know, it's like a welcoming gift. And I've, and that was kind of my rationale was like, okay, this is a sort of a acceptance ceremony and he's offering me this thing. And, uh, I, I don't want to be the rude person that says like, you know, turn down gifts that this new tribe that you've entered as an outsider. If you go into like a tribe, you know, that's like pretty classic shit. You go somewhere like to another land, to another culture. And if they offer you something, you should probably accept it, you know, an offering. And that was his offering was triple C's. And I said, I, I don't know. Well, will four do anything? He's like, no, I take about 12. That does me fine. Four, you probably won't feel anything. So I took like three or four. And I sat around. And about an hour later, I started feeling kind of weird, kind of lightheaded, a little dizzy, not nauseous, just a little spacey. And I decided it was time for me to probably go to bed. Because if anything was going to happen, I would rather just sleep through it and wake up well rested. So I bid everyone good night, closed the door to my new room, and lay down on the barren mattress. And uh, and that's where the shit started happening. And I'll get into it right after this quick break. Be right back. I'm back. All right. So. I lay down on my barren mattress and curl up on my side. I have no pillows. I have very little of anything. I've got some stuff still up at my parents' house in Oklahoma, but I have just essentials that I need in a duffel bag and in my backpack. I curl up on my side and close my eyes and try to go to sleep. And sleep doesn't come. I get relaxed, and I notice my breath gets deep, deeper, deeper still, and I notice I'm, I'm breathing really well, very free, un, and no, no tension. The tension in my body kind of melts away, and I kind of get the feeling like I'm floating a little bit, almost like 
my almost kind of gyroscopic, like gravity's acting kind of weird. And I kind of peek my eyes open and there is a uh, halogen light flooding in from the parking lot lights through the, the blinds of my window over the, like there's like a built in desk in my bedroom next to the, next to the, um, the closet with the sliding mirror doors. And I notice the room is just sort of like tilting. It's almost like I'm on a ship on not stormy, but not placid waters. Things are tilting and shifting around and I'm becoming kind of sweaty a little bit. Like I'm just becoming very aware of, of tactile sensations of my body, of my skin, my sense of smell becomes heightened and then it clicks. Oh shit. I don't think three or four triple C's did nothing. As a matter of fact, I think it did something because I recognize this for, you know, I've read things before. I recognized the sensation as you know, being in line with descriptions that I've read about uh, people tripping, you know, tripping on stuff. And so the triple C's did something. And I started feeling a little anxious. My heartbeat wasn't racing, but I could feel it. It was like a big old bass drum in my in my chest in the rib cage, and uh, and I my brain just felt like it was doing weird stuff, like it was squirming around. My my consciousness was squirming around. The room was just kept tilting, and I I was no longer sleepy, but I wasn't. I didn't feel fully awake. I just felt kind of delirious. And then, uh, you know, shadows. I, I started feeling like there was something in the room with me. Like, could it be the, the lingering psychosis of the Marianne that last occupied the room, the, the last tenant of that room, who, if you watch the last episode, you know, was not totally sound in the old uh, thinker, thinky box. Could it be some lingering, uh, psychic, uh, insane reverberations that my, my now spongy, undulating mind was perceiving? Was I soaking up this dread? I felt this dread and I felt like there was some kind of like a shadow presence with me. Like there were the normal shadows, but there was a mass of shadow that I felt in a, in one corner of the room. It, it was a f sort of menacing. It, ha it was just emanating these menacing vibrations that I was picking up on. And I said, this is not a good place. This is not a happy place. And I do not enjoy what's going on right now. In short, I made a mistake. It's what I told myself. And so I just, I closed my eyes tight and I just started praying the Lord's prayer and uh, just, you know, just praying, please make the room stop. Please make this end. Make whatever that fucking menacing shadow masses go away. I just want to be normal again. I just want to sleep. I've got a big fucking day. So I close my eyes and I still feel like gravity is shifting and stuff. And I'm not going to sleep, but I'm sure as hell I'm not going to open my fucking eyes. So I go in at some point. I, 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 I know how to meditate already. So I just do breathing exercises. I do controlled breathing and just try to enter into a sort of meditative state. And I guess I stayed that way for probably hours because the next time I opened my eyes, I had not gone fully to sleep. However, time sort of just flew by and the pale the 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 pale whispers of pink and magenta morning light 
were now shining in where once the halogen lights in their harsh, pale, sickly bluish green ghoul light was pouring in was now replaced with the warm light of morning and hearkening a a uh just a a sense of calm a sense of security a sense of this is going to be okay the night is done the shadow mass is gone the room isn't shifting around gravity's not shifting around anymore and i think i might be normal again and I, I just felt a little, um, you know, fuzzy brained as I do most mornings. And so I, I look at the time and I've got a couple more hours. So I set an alarm on my phone and I get a couple more hours of sleep and I, I, I fall asleep hard. The alarm blasts, blasts. I wake up, I, um, I get up and I say, all right, it's time I've got. 45 minutes to get to this meeting that's plenty of time to get ready and get there early so i you know i put on my my underpants i go into the little hallway i look in the mirror in the hallway and my pupils were huge still and i said i look like shit i look like i um did some stuff last night that I probably shouldn't have done. And I, uh, I got to get my shit together quick. So I, I drew a bath in the bathtub, which was just, you know, stained with the hard stuff. So, you know, water stained, there's rings around the tub. No one's cleaned anything in this apartment, not the Kiwi, certainly not the management. This place needs to be cleaned. It's dingy, it's grungy, it's seedy. The toilet is seedy. There are, you know, there's a pale, dim, flickering light in the bathtub with like a glass bowl around it full of dead bugs. And it was just a really dark, seedy scene. And I I wash up as much as I can. I've got my own soap and everything. Uh, I, I clean up as much as I can. I get out, I dry off. I put in my contact lenses. You may not know this. I usually don't wear glasses for this podcast for those of you watching, but I've got really poor eyesight. I've had to wear glasses since I was nine years old. Um, but I I put in my contacts for the meeting and my eyes are still huge, but I'm just saying like, all right, nothing I can do about that now. The fuck was that? Did you hear that slam? Oh, neighbors slamming their car doors. Damn, they they really enjoy slamming their car doors. Um, what else? What happens? I get dressed, I get ready, and I go. And my eyes are still pretty big, but at least I look clean and shaven now. I have, um, I have my resume. I don't. I actually, I think I do. I have a headshot by this point because I got one in grad school from one of the other students was um, learning her way around a camera and offered to take pictures for people for her, por- her portfolio and for us to have headshots. So I had, I had a headshot from grad school and I had my resume and I go to the meeting place and it's at this newer building over at the time. It, it looks totally different at this place now, um, of East, I think it was third street, somewhere around there around East 6th, East 3rd Street, just east of I-35. And I go to the address and I go to the door and I, and the door's locked. You know, it's a metal door with like glass frame and it's locked. And I look and there's like, you know, a little call button that some office buildings have where you press in a three digit number on the pad and it will call that office and they will buzz you in so you can open the door. Well, I, I find the the digit number and the office suite for my potential new agency. And I type in the number. It rings. It rings. It rings. It stops ringing. I got no answer. 
So I'm like, okay, okay, this is not good. So I, I look at my phone, I check my email to make sure that I got the right address. Yes, I got the right address. I check to make sure that I got the right time. Yes, I'm 15 minutes early. So I try calling again, buzz, ring, 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 done ringing, no answer. I start getting nervous. I start pacing up and down the sidewalk thinking, shit, what if this doesn't go through? Is this like my only chance? This could be my only chance. Now, the reason I got this meeting was because um, my friend Liz, who I met in grad school, uh, she was already signed on with the agency. And when she learned that I was moving to Austin, she put in a good word. She's, she suggested the agency and she put in a good word for me. And I emailed them and they were like, ah, yeah, we know about you. We want to meet you. And uh, so that's how I got this meeting, like a month, like a, a couple weeks before I even drove down to Austin. Well, I, I try, I, I go back, I quit pacing, I go back, I dial the number again on the pad, still no answer. And at this point, I'm just, I, I'm just really nervous because I, I know I'm going to need some money soon and I would prefer to make that money through acting and I don't know how to make that happen without an agent. And I don't know if I'm going to get another chance to meet with any agents except for this guy. This is my one chance and he's not fucking answering just then a uh, yuppie walked out of the door the locked door he walked out i grabbed it slipped inside and went into the building and the building was kind of uh windy there was it was only two floors but there was like an upstairs and like weird level weird interior architecture i was very uh it was a little disorienting on top of the fact that I was already quite disoriented from the night before. So I walk around for a while trying to find the office suite and I'm not finding it. And just as I'm about to like look at my phone again to see if I can find, see if I'm at the right address yet again, I see it. There it is. Blah. I, I don't know that I want to name the agency here. So let's just call it the ABC agency, okay? For this, for, for this purpose, let's call it the ABC agency. I see a plaque next to a door that says ABC agency. And I, uh, you know, I go up to it. There's a door closed. It's, it's got a wood frame and like some frosted glass. And I check the time. I'm a few minutes early and I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Do I just walk in? Is there like a secretary area? I don't know what this office looks like. I put my ear to the door and I hear some talking on it behind the door. So I just gently tap on the frosted glass. From the other side, I hear a, hey, come in. I, I poke my head in and I see a pretty handsome man who looks like he's about 50. Great hair, glasses, great smile, handsome guy. Uh, salt and pepper hair slicked back well combed back rather and he smiles and he says you must be james and i said yeah that's me he says i'll be with you in just a minute i need to finish up this meeting and then i'll come i'll i'll let you in okay because he was sitting across from a a handsome younger dude who looked like he was maybe i don't know 30 or so muscly guy very um, conventionally handsome dude. So I say, great. And I close the door and, uh, I look around and there's no bench, there's no chairs, there's nothing. So I just, I sit on the floor next to the door and twiddle my thumbs. Meanwhile, my brain starts feeling like it's squirming a bit again. Not, not as intense as it was the night before, but I'm definitely feeling spacey and spaced out. And I'm just like, I want this to go well. And I twiddle my thumbs. Ten minutes pass. Uh, the door opens. The meeting is done. The handsome guy walks by, he says hi, and shakes my hand. And my agent, my ABC agent, well, soon to be agent, uh, ushers me inside. And uh, we... We sit down at the desk, 
and along the wall on the back wall there's you know it's got your average it's kind of like an ikea looking office because there's ikea sort of uh, furniture in there and on the back wall the back wall is just brick everything else is whitewashed uh dry drywall but the back wall the accent wall is brick and on it there are you know just headshots of all the people they represent and up there is my friend liz um she's featured on there and so i'm like man I'm looking at it, and the agent says, your face will be on there soon. And I say, really? And he said, yeah. Let me, um, did you, looks like you brought some stuff with you. And I said, yes, yes, I I uh, brought some headshots, and I brought my, my resume. So he's like, let me see the uh, resume. And I handed my resume to him. An acting resume just shows classes you've taken workshops shows you've done that sort of thing um and he reads over it and he's like this is very impressive um i would love to represent you however this headshot maybe you need something a little more professional and i was like i was actually going to mention that he's like we can recommend some people if you know anybody that you want to take a headshot with that's great um we've got a dude here who takes headshots you don't have to take a headshot with him but i think he's offering like a pretty sweet deal right now so i say okay I'll, I'll, i'd like to contact him so he gives me that dude's contact info but the guy's like uh, the agent says well i'd like to represent you and uh here's a contract for a year and um you know it goes up in a year it's a non-binding contract so you can sign on with other people if you want but um you know here's the details and he just gives me the rundown and then he's all and then he i i so i signed that i'm very eager to sign it so i sign on boom hey presto i have representation now and then he's like now we also have a website in order to get you on the website um you're going to have to pay a hundred dollar fee and i was like hundred dollars for what and he's like oh well it's expensive to do hosting and to you know for data usage and everything then we have to get your your picture on there and a little bio but we will get you set up on these other websites that will help you and help us find you um roles that are up actors access casting network yada yada these are websites that we pay for so really you're getting a pretty sweet deal it's only a hundred bucks so I get out my checkbook, but why did I bring my checkbook? If you're signing on with an agent, the last thing you should need is a checkbook. And I'll explain why after this break. Man, I feel like this is going by really fast. Be right back. I had a professor in grad school named Lloyd Caldwell. He taught stage combat and he also had a acting business class now that was the only practical class that i wish there was some more of in my theater program that's something i feel like is missing from at least the theater programs i was in it's it was the kind of class i wish i had more of and it was basically explained what you need to do in the biz and what to expect um, business-wise because you learn a lot about voice movement technique um, so on so forth but as far as like finding work especially as an actor um, you don't learn that but in this class you learned about a bit about it and uh, so I took the class and he taught about a lot of it um, it was more toward what he did when he was living in New York City in the 80s, in the 80s and 90s. Um, he talked about, you know, how to get through day by day, how to make money, 
how to make rent and have time to go to auditions, how to get to auditions. Um, you know, he pinned up a map of the city on, on his apartment wall. He worked as a super. That was a good way to, you know, knock down his, his rent payments. And a lot of this, some of it was, st- it was a little, some of the stuff has changed, but some of the stuff was still, you know, relevant uh, for the way things are now. I, a lot of it was relevant. Just some of the stuff wasn't so much like going up. But one of the things he did was like he would plan out. He had a bicycle. He'd plan out what he needed to wear. He said, bring two pairs of shoes, wear some nice shoes to go in to meet with people and then get some comfortable shoes and preferably just get some nice, really comfortable shoes. Comfort is a big, big thing in the context of Manhattan because you're going to be doing a lot of walking and you need to plan out your week ahead like the weekend before plan out your week who are you going to hit on what days you know you'd say go to this casting director go to this agency go in in this particular area you'd plot out what offices exist within a close proximity to each other and hit those up in one day meet the people and the people you want to be really nice to are the administrators the secretaries the the welcoming people at the desk become their friend be very nice to them because they will be the ones who will put a word in about you and give a good review for you to the people that you want to get in front of the people that you're probably it's going to be harder to get in front of so get be nice to the administrators and after you meet with them even the administrators send a thank you note if you meet with them uh, the next week, send the thank you note saying, hey, it was a pleasure, yada, yada. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Done. And that way you stick out in their memory. That's really good. That's not not even just for acting business. That's for any kind of career is send thank you notes, not just an email, like write one out, make a physical letter or a card and send a thank you note. That is does so much it does so much for you um well anyway one of the things he taught was um agents how to get an agent um how much agents charge because the and and what the the role of an agent is and what the relationship what a healthy agent relationship looks like and what an unhealthy agent relationship looks like now an unhealthy agent takes more than like it depends on what the type of work is but basically 10 or 15 percent that's generally what they take is probably like 10 percent if they're wanting more that's a fucking scam if and if they want you to pay for anything if they want you to cut them a check for anything that's the a very clear sign that's a huge red flag that that agency and that agent is a fucking scam and a scam artist with talent agents you don't pay for shit the only way they should make their money is by taking a percentage 10 or 15 percent depending on the type of work be it print or whatever let's just say 10 percent the only way they should be getting paid is by taking 10 percent of the check from the work that they helped you get from the the contract and the rate that they negotiated on your behalf that is how an agent gets paid you do not pay them with your own money they just get a piece of your your payday. That's it. A very small piece of payday. Um, well, well, a tenth of it. It's not always that small. Now, I knew this, and I took that to heart. Why, oh why? I was so desperate. I was so green and and uh, just desperate. Um, and, and, and nervous the morning that I, I left my apartment, my dirty apartment, I packed my bag. And for some reason, I, I kept my checkbook in there. I already had my checkbook in it. And I kept my checkbook in there because I felt like I might need it. And all the stuff that I had taken to heart 
the stuff that I learned from Lloyd, I remembered it. I thought about it as I was putting my checkbook in my, or keeping my checkbook in my bag and looking at it and saying, I should take this with me, even though Lloyd said not to. They shouldn't ask for any kind of money. Now, get to near the end of the meeting. The agent says, oh, well, it's a hundred dollar fee to get on the website. I know how much it costs to run a website, and I looked at their website. It doesn't cost shit to put a picture on there, and it doesn't cost a whole lot to host. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. It costs a lot to get web designers, but what they were doing did not call for any kind of web design. All they had to do was upload a photo to a page, which costs zero. It costs zero. Um, but the guy said it's $100 for, for a year. Um, and then when the uh, renewal came up, you'd have to pay that fee again. And I was like, I, I, I tried to negotiate it with him. Uh, I tried to question him because he, his eyes, he kind of had shark eyes a bit. And he was a little slick. I expected an agent to be slick. And this guy was, he was slick, salesman kind of slick. Very quick, fast talking. And uh, I, I could tell... I could tell there was something here. And so I tried to contest the check, but he was like, I mean, we have to have it. You won't be able to get work without it. We won't be able to submit you unless we can get your picture. And that won't happen unless we get the check. And I said, okay, and, and this is every year? And he said, yeah, every year. And I was like, um, okay. And in the back of my head, I'm screaming, do you not fucking remember what Lloyd said? You idiot. Do not do this. This is a red flag. But I cut the check. And before I handed it to him, I was like, all right, it's November now. It's the beginning of November. Am I going to have to pay again in a month? And the guy said, yeah. And I just kind of like grabbed the check back and pressed it to my chest, clutched my pearls and was like, uh, and the guy was like, no, no, I'm just fucking with you. It'll be a year from today. And I was like, okay, fine. So I, I slid the check across the desk to him and, um, signed whatever papers I needed to sign. He handed me a bundle of papers with just, you know, legal agreement stuff on it and said, congratulations. You'll start getting work in no time. I see great things for you. I see great things in your future. And uh, that's how I got my first agent and neglected what I had learned from Lloyd. Um, and that agent at the ABC agency turned out to be not great. Not great. Payments came in late. I had to learn about the the rules of payment here in Texas because Texas is a adamant non-union. Texas is an anti-union state. So, and, and like I said, that was part of the reason I came here. So it'd get be easier to get work. So I thought. Um, but one of the things is uh, your agent has ninety days to pay you. So when you get work, um, the, the client, the person who is, you know, the money backer for whatever project you were working on, be it a commercial or whatever else, they will send the money to your agent, your agency, your agency will take their 10% and then cut you a, an agency check for the remain, remaining 90% and send that to you. So uh, under Texas law, the agency has 90 days before they have to send that to you. Now, it seemed like more often than not, whenever I was waiting for a check, I had to wait a full 90 days. Uh, at the beginning, it came in within 30 days. It came in like within a couple weeks. And then I wasn't getting much, uh, I wasn't getting many auditions and I was wondering what the fuck is going on. So I started signing up for background work to be an extra and I was getting extra gigs and there was basically like 
one occasion where being an extra kind of compromised my chance of getting an audition for an actual role on a, uh, a visiting TV series. Granted, it was like a small day role, um, but that was the day I was like, I can't, I can't be background anymore. It's just boring. I mean, it's really easy. You just stand around most of the time for like 12 hours and you get paid pretty fucking well compared to anything else. Definitely compared to like, uh, you know, uh, any restaurant, it's really good paying wage work compared to a lot of other wage work here. But, you know, at a certain point I was like, if I keep doing background work, all I'm going to get is background work and I need something more. I did not work hard and go into debt to be a fucking extra. And it's clearly not doing me any favors. I thought, you know, maybe this will maybe introduce me to people. No, no, it didn't really do anything. It just paid for some stuff. Um, but yeah, I signed on with the agency, went back to the apartment, cleaned up my room and got undressed, um, tried to get comfortable. And, and as I was getting out of my nice clothing, I noticed during the meeting that I was kind of itchy on the left side of my torso. And so when I took off my, my shirt, I, I checked out the, the itchy spot and I saw that there were marks that looked like flea bites. Now I had lived in a, a rent house that had really bad flea infestation. So I knew what flea bites looked like and felt like these felt like flea bites and they kind of looked like flea bites, but they were smaller. And instead of like, all over the place like chicken pox they were kind of like in rows i noticed that these dots these these raised red marks were in rows and i was like what is this even about so i went to the rotc guy and i told him about it and he was like oh those are bed bugs and i said what and he said oh yeah this place has bed bugs got cockroaches those are bed bugs bites I can show you where the bed bugs are. They they get up in the corner, up in the the creases of you know your mattress. You can see they'll uh, they'll shit. They'll leave little brown, little black spots on there. Here, let me show you. So we both went to my my bedroom and and he lifted up like the the crease lining around like each corner of the bed, and he said, "You see those little dots there? That those are bed bugs markings right there. That's that's bed bug dropping." And so you got bed bugs, man. And I was like, fuck this shit. Will you help me throw this thing in the dumpster? I actually, uh, before I did that, I went to the, um, I went to the front office and told the, uh, whatever, you know, ma shift manager was there at the time and they didn't do shit. And they just pretended like they didn't hear me and started talking to someone else. So I went back to the apartment and I got a ROTC guy to help me lift the mattress up and throw it in the dumpster and also throw out the frame. And then I went back to the front office and said, look, you guys, I'm not sleeping on a bed bug mattress. And it seems to me like you probably knew it had fucking bed bugs. So I threw it out. That shouldn't be a problem. And they were like, Oh no, no problem at all. We'll get a new mattress in there soon enough. And I said, I doubt it. And walked back to my car, drove to um, an academy sports store and bought myself a queen size, double, double tall air mattress. So that solved the problem of getting bed bugs because bed bugs don't get into uh, uh, an air mattress because it's rubber, you know. So I slept on an air mattress and that thing was pretty damn good. I, I mean, I slept on that my entire lease there, like six months or so, however long. I think it was six months, maybe eight. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that was that was the thing sleeping on a fucking air mattress and um my first audition i had to drive up to dallas for it and it was for some like kids show they're looking for a host for some like kids 
show and I auditioned for it and they wanted me to like play with like a slinky and stuff like that. And that clearly didn't go well. I like, I did not feel the vibe. It it was just like a really off vibe and the casting director and the director, whoever else was there was like, it was just weird. And so I drove back, back to Austin and I was like, I'm not going to get that. And I don't like, I really hope I'm not going to have to fucking drive to Dallas and Houston to go to auditions all the times. I moved to Austin to audition in Austin, you know, because this is you drive you you, you, when you drive somewhere, it's out of your own pocket uh, to go to an audition. You have to pay for that. Granted, you can write it off because as an actor, you are self-employed. You can write it off. You can deduct it from your taxes. However, that is going to come out of your pocket. Um, and I didn't get much. Things happened. The first, the first gig I actually booked um, outside of background work was some commercial. I forget for for what, but um, I was at Beth Sepko, big casting director here. And I was wearing some desert boots, some gray suede Clarks that my parents bought for me in grad school. I love those shoes. And those shoes are the reason I got cast in my first commercial, my first like actual gig here in Austin. She, you know, I was just in a group and there were no words or anything. It was just like a group of, you know, sexy 20 somethings having a party, like a rooftop party was the premise. And so they played some Daft Punk or something and we were dancing around to it and I was hung over from the night before and um, Beth, the casting director, she like pointed me out. She's like, I love those shoes. I'm going to call you back. (laughs) And so she so at the end of the audition, she was like, be sure to wear those shoes at the callback. okay?" and I was like, all right. And, you know, the next week. I go in for the callback and she's like, I love those shoes. <laughs> like you're going to get the job. Uh, sure enough, I got the job and that was my first job. Um, but the acting work turns out um, was not as easy to come by as I expected it would be. So I had to find the one thing I wanted to avoid and that is a day job. And I think I'm going to have to make this into a part three because I still haven't gotten to the part about feeling like an alien yet. This is just the middle, folks. So I, I, I hope you're into this. I hope you find this story engaging at all. Um, and also, this is like, uh, this is just a very loose, you know, flyby sort of preview of. Uh, some stuff that I based a book on that I started writing when I was like 27. And uh, right now I am just like looking around for literary agents. I I think I finally got a query written, a letter, uh, a query letter written. You have to send a query letter, which is basically sort of like a sort of sort of a teaser for what your book is about, what your novel is about. And it's supposed to get, uh, ideally, it will get an agent to want to read more and ask you for pages or chapters or maybe even a full manuscript. Well, I've got a full manuscript and um, I worked hard on that fucking thing. And um, and it's based, it's a, it's a novel, but it's based, closely based on a lot of real shit that happened. Um But anyway, yeah, this is part two, and I think I'm going to do a part three of The Outsider uh, next week. So thank you for listening again. I kind of, I I had no idea. I, I kind of suspected that this might be more than two parts. So let's say next week will be the finale, part three of my kind of beginnings here in Austin. And, uh, yeah, if you, again, if you want to help support the show, please donate at 
patreon.com slash that thing with James. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at James J. Asher. You can visit my website that I, I hope is still up, jamesjasher.com. You can email me that thing with James at gmail.com. If you're listening and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, rate, and review. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button so you get notifications when I upload um, videos and also like the videos you like write a comment and for all of you share the show with your friends i love you i love you so much and thank you to josh and wade for donating to this show you guys rock the casbah and i will catch you all next week i love you bye